Hello and welcome to another edition of Forkful of Noodles. I am Krish Mohan. If you've grown up with siblings, you know that conflict is part of the day-to-day, -day, especially if you shared a room. Every sibling rivalry comes to a point where there's a line drawn in the middle of the room and no one dare cross that line or there will be consequences until one of you decides, you know what, I'm, I don't care about this line. I want that Power Ranger toy, so I'm going to go across to the other side and grab the thing that I want. This erupts into a covert operation where each sibling takes more and more stuff from the other side of the room, and eventually it comes to a head where both of you find yourself on the floor, out of breath, holding a chunk of each other's hair. We see acts of violence everywhere, constantly. Let's take this outside is one of the ways we love to solve a ton of our problems. Peaceful protests turn ugly when someone punches a protester in the face. Ballrooms fall to a hush as the first beer bottle is broken over somebody's honor. The game of Red Rover is basically what the Mongolians did with the Chinese before the Great Wall was built. And the title of Archduke is ruined and abolished thanks to World War I. War is the epitome of violent behavior we've come up with as human beings. And most war happens the same way that sibling rivalry does. But instead of the Power Ranger toy, it's something like a water source or oil or a pretty lady. And instead of chunks of hair, it's piles and piles of other dead humans. Hair grows back, but the dead don't. Not one story about the dead coming back to life has yielded a happy ending. You know, we've decided to bring back Einstein, Napoleon, and Ulysses S. Grant back from the grave, and things are going well. They're having tea and discussing a way to deliver free energy to the masses. Most likely what would happen is, dear, dear God, can, can somebody get Einstein zombie off the cameraman? He's eating his liver at this point. Oh, okay. Okay, who left the booze out? Because Grant zombie has found the booze. It's found the boot. Okay, well, can somebody stop Napoleon Zombie? Because it's trying to bang the camera to prove that it's a man. But it turns out that war is in our nature. Scientists have just discovered one of the oldest massacres in Kenya. They found 27 bodies killed over 10,000 years ago. These bodies were beaten, shot with arrows, stabbed with obsidian knives, and at least four of them were bound by the arms and legs. It's like the darkest game of World of Warcraft ever. What's significant about this fact is that they are hunter-gatherers, a group that was previously believed to be relatively peaceful. Relatively. I mean, they were still beating the shit out of tigers and rats and lesser apes. But it begs the question, how powerful is our need to be at war with each other? The speculation for why there were signs of prolonged conflict lies in the fact that this Kenyan lagoon was a rich lake teeming with fish and food, so it was a vantage point for survival. So when the first group of nomadic prehumans showed up, they probably thought, oh, finally, I can rest and shave. I've been using this sharp rock to kill tigers and small mammals, and now maybe I can turn it into something to get rid of some of this hair from my face and genitals. But then as the second group arrived, there was a line drawn in the sand. And the line, as it was being drawn by group one, group two pulled out their obsidian knives, arrows, and clubs and killed the 27 folks in group one, delaying the concept of shaving and man and ladyscaping by thousands of years. If group two would have just been able to share, shaving technology would be miles ahead of where it is. No one would fear the uneven beard. We could be living in a world where the hair down below can look like a bunny rabbit with little to no cuts and bumps. How adorable would that be? The argument is that our nature to be at conflict with each other is just as strong as our nature to be altruistic and care about each other, which is probably true. Think about those siblings. If your sibling drops some food on the ground, you'll probably wind up giving them food from your plate after mercilessly making fun of them for being a klutzy Clara. And their name doesn't even have to be Clara. But I think we've evolved past needing war to solve our problems. Evolution has dictated that. We don't have claws. We have manicured nails that'll break if you touch anybody. We don't have night vision. 
We have high beams on our cars. High beams that we don't even use to see better in the dark, but rather annoy the guy in front of us because we think he's not going fast enough. We don't have fangs. We have adult baby food. Literally, a bunch of squished up fruit that we put in a squeezy pack for grown-ups on the go. So we don't need to be this aggressive because our brains have evolved past it. We can resolve our problems with the gift of communication and a lesson we learned in kindergarten. Sharing is caring. When our brains started evolving, we had a choice. A choice to figure out how every human can have a home, water, food, clothes, and a way to advance medicine. Or we can figure out how to make sharp rocks come out of this stick way fast so that it goes through the other guy. The line in the sand doesn't need to be drawn at all. That room could have been a place that both siblings could have shared to hang out and commiserate. That beach in Kenya could have easily been shared by both those groups. And I bet there was so much that both those groups could learn from each other. Think of all the things we get when we work together rather than all the things we destroy when we go to war. Isn't it time that we started working together to build something like a better way to educate ourselves, creating cooler Power Rangers, and a less painful way to man and ladyscape? For the sake of our genitals, I think it's time that we evolved past war. That's been your fork full of noodles for this week. Uh, I am doing a Kickstarter to help me raise funds to get recording equipment to record my third hour of stand-up comedy. You can find out all the details for that at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Thanks for getting into it.